Hey everybody, this week we're here with Julie with Working Clay and uh, she's a, a, a fellow vendor at LJ Farmers Market. She lives up here in LJ and she actually has her own pottery shop and so we came to pay her a visit today to kind of, she, she's kind of giving us a tour of the place and showing us what she does. She has some amazing work guys and uh, I'll show you some other, some of her work and, and some of the b-roll in the background here later on but uh, definitely check her out. Uh, guys, as always, you know, we'll put all of her information down in the comments. So we'll have a link to her website, to her Facebook page. She does some Facebook live videos. And so you'll definitely want to check those out with her actually doing some stuff in, in, in action. And uh, she's got her own kiln here. And uh, once maybe all this other COVID stuff gets back, she'll get back to doing some classes. She used to do some classes here in town. And those are amazing. Uh, our, our buddy of ours, Hightower Krause, used to take some classes from her. And that's how I kind of learned about her. But her work is just amazing. Uh, you can see some of it behind us here. But uh, definitely check her out. Uh, we're, we're glad to have her on our video this week and give us a show around the out around her shop here. Hi, I'm Julie Brown. Thanks for stopping by. Um, this is my pottery studio. A lot of people don't realize what goes in to making a single piece of usable art and with this wonderful video, you can take a quick tour of my studio. Thanks so much. I guess this is why they call it throwing a pot. He's ready. <laughs> That's how it comes off of this bat that sits on there on the wheel. And then I can trim it and then get a handle on it. <laughs> get a handle on it. Would you? <laughs> so I've got to get it centered so I trim an even circle. So it's kind of like Goldilocks, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just right. <laughs> and then I'll get that nice and smooth where it would sit on a table. And just so it isn't going to scratch a surface when it's being used. It is handmade. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's unique. You won't see another one like it. Identical. So there's the handle. And the trimmed foot. And they're drying. This is the most fragile state they could ever be in right now. They're called bone dry. That means they're ready to get fired. And they go in there and it goes up to 1945 degrees, which takes about 12 to 14 hours for it to do that. Mm. And, wow. and it gets warm in here. In the winter, it's great. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> but, um, then it cools for about 30, 36 hours before I can take them out. Wow. That's that amazing. That is a long process. Mm -hmm. Then they're porous enough to absorb the glaze. Some glazes don't make a difference, but you can put the same glaze on a white clay and put it on a brown. It'll look a lot different. Um, it just depends what kind of glaze I'm going to put on it. See how I get more of that? 
teal in there because it's white. Mm -hmm. From oven to table. <laughs> Yep, you've got all the secrets now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only it was that easy, huh? Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's always something to learn. There's always something to make. I mean, there's it's endless what you can do to the surfaces and shapes. Yeah. One speck of a, a little something makes an indentation, you can't hide it. And it's so similar to life. We're so influenced by what's around us. Mm -hmm. And it'll... It'll show up, yep. The, the porch, the screen door upstairs is my handle. Oh, yeah. Or a, a I have little bigger, a much, well, little bigger ones for a hand towel, too, in the kitchen. See, I would have awesome. never thought clay is strong enough to do a handle yeah. or a hood. Or... Very strong. That is neat. Yeah, really it's fired up to 2,200 degrees in the glaze fire. Wow. Mm. I mean, it's, yeah. Between the glass coating on the clay, between the two of them, it's real strong. In high school, we had like one class, six weeks or something. That was it. Then I got in college and saw, oh, I can take ceramics every semester. So I went to college on a golf scholarship. <laughs> to learn to work in clay. That's awesome. So how long have you been doing all this? I mean, obviously a very long Probably time. Probably 35 years was when I found out I need to be doing this, <laughs> you know. Mm. But, um, so was, so what, what, what made you, what well, led, you, led you to that? I was so kind of just in awe that you could take something raw out of the ground and make it into a useful product. Especially people can use it with food. You know, it's in your cabinets, the cups, the bowls, plates, you can cook in it and share it with other people. And I'm like, wow. I mean, I was always into kind of crafty things or I'm like, this is, this is cool. The purpose was there. I think, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. My family always knew what they were getting for Christmas, <laughs> whether they liked it or not. But, and then I find out, like the gnomes, people just get so much joy out of them. So. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're giving them as gifts, or so that's fun for me. And I just love the craft of it, shaping the piece, um, and the whole process, like you've seen with the kiln. Yeah. It yeah. seems so personal to me I mean it's you're, it's so hands-on it's a labor and, of love yeah, and yeah. It, it is yeah. so intensive it's, it's yeah. it, it would be hard for me to let go of pieces I think <laughs> it kind of is sometimes after people leave oh that's gone I mean so I try to get pictures of everything yeah because mm -hmm. I mean that piece was in my mind at some point to make it the to way create. I did and then I try to get a picture and and Somebody said, I want one just like that. Well, it's not going to be just like that. It'll be close. You know, the handles may be a little different, but similar. But to see the textures and the color blends that come out of the kiln, I'm just like a child jumping up and down. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Christmas morning. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, and, and like, like this piece here. Yeah. Do you... Let me see if I can up here. So, so when, you, when you start putting that glaze on there, is... Mm -hmm. Is this kind of what you had planned, or does it kind of evolve as it, well, as, shape, it as it heats up and stuff? The shape helped me to give it that coloring, but then also <laughs> this this right here really drove what kind of glaze was going to come on it because I put that texture in there when the clay was wet, so that told me how to glaze it, and it's it's typically I'm inspired by creation just. By the landscape piece. yeah yeah the landscape and so the colors and I mean that could be a beach scene to somebody that could uh -huh. be that, that's what it reminds me mm -hmm. of actually is I, I, I see I see the sand and the beach waves mm -hmm. and, and then yeah. it could be desert it, 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 it could be Blue Ridge you just so so the piece kind of in some respects kind of takes on a life of its own it does it? it does the shape and the texture speaks to me yeah about what glaze to put on it 
Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. That's I like love. the sculptor says, the art is in there. It's mm -hmm. up to him to reveal it. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Where this one, as smooth as this is in here, I let the glaze give it the texture, the variations in coloring because of the shape. Now that flowed, the, the shape of that bowl helped all that run the way it did mm -hmm. and blend because of the shape. Oh, I've got one to show you. Ooh. And then knowing what glazes work well with each other, sure, like the sure. reds, the brown, the blue, how they yeah. flow. <clears throat> Let me show you. A wower. <laughs> Just all the stuff going on on there. That's gorgeous. And everybody sees something different. You know, it speaks to them too. Um, That, to me, when I saw that come out of the kiln, I, I'm looking in there and I'm seeing like the skies, just cosmic stuff going on up there, isn't it? Like meteorites or whatever. So how would you have, how did you apply the glaze to that with the different colors to make it do that? I dip, I have to put it in a large enough container so I can dip certain areas and then I also pour it on. And the way you pour it, according to the shape is going to determine what it does. Yep. And you got something else going on over here. See when I see that it almost looks like if you're looking at the top of a rainbow down through a rainbow. Yeah. And I like that it's that that form mm -hmm. to allow that to happen. That's how good I would see a rainbow. <laughs> From up there in the space station. Mm -hmm. mm. That's, cool. That's too cool. I love it. <laughs> you, can, you can make your margarita and then you can dance a little bit. <laughs>